No AI was used in any way, shape, or form in the production of this video. On today's video, I'm going to be checking out this Dyness 12.8 volt 100 amp hour lithium iron phosphate battery mini trolling motor edition with smart Bluetooth. Let's get right into it. Charging up the battery before the capacity test. Make note that the battery is almost full. Went to the battery information tab in the app. Check out the cell voltages hanging around pretty close to each other. That's always good to see. All right, the charger has completed its sequence, indicating the battery is full. Fets shut down and would not allow any more charging into the battery. Go to the battery parameters page. You see the charging MOSFET is turned off. The discharge MOSFET is on. So that's all the energy that the BMS will allow into this battery. And also notice the voltage discrepancy at the terminals right here. 13.34 and then the actual BMS is reporting 13.65 at the pack. So I'm assuming this BMS has some kind of diode circuit in it, similar to some other brand BMSs I've worked with previously. So the Dyness is connected to my capacity test rig, the same setup I always use for consistency. The energy meter is zeroed out. No energy has moved to the battery. The inverter has not been turned on, but check that out. 13.06 volts from the battery and then the Bluetooth showing 13.53. So I'm assuming when I put a load to this, that voltage is going to jump up through that diode circuit back to corresponding properly with that voltage right there. So let's see. All right, so I'll turn the inverter on now. Drop below 13 volts. See what happens. Still 13.51 over here, 12.95 over here. Verification with another meter, 12.95. 12.95, 13.51. So the load for this test will be the charger that charges the battery. So let me apply the load. We'll see if this voltage jumps up. Dropping further. All right, there it went. Jumped up to 13.42 after taking just a little bit of energy out of the battery. By the time the charger started loading up, the voltage came up. So 13.10 there now and 13.25 there. All right, so the test is underway. Our goal is 1,280 watt hours. If you looked at the Bluetooth, it was showing 102 amp hours and change. We'll see if we get that. But note, barely into the test and below 13 volts by quite a bit already. So we'll see. 28 watt hours through the battery and the cell voltages are down to 3.26. Battery's about halfway through its capacity run. Just taking some infrared scans and stuff of the battery right there to see if there's any noticeable heat spots, things like that. Getting some, just the wires are warm across the top, my battery leads right there. And maybe a little hot spot on the side right there so I can see during the teardown what that's about. About to reach the rated capacity on the Dyn-S. So here we go, should roll over any moment now. All right, 1280 watt hours delivered so far. So much more it's got. The inverter should be cutting off on low voltage any moment now. All right, the inverter went off on low voltage. Real world usable capacity on an inverter, 1,327 watt hours out of the Dyn-S. And the Bluetooth reporting is showing one amp hour remaining based on its calculations. There may be one amp hour left. We're running a straight DC load down to nine and a half volts or whatever the low voltage disconnect is. We also have three alarms, a battery cell low voltage alarm, a battery pack low voltage alarm, and a state of charge low alarm. And there are the cell voltages after the capacity run. So the cells stayed pretty even from top to bottom. So real world capacity through an inverter, 103.67 amp hours. Not bad. So what comes with the battery? Well, of course you get the battery itself with this built-in Bluetooth. Get their app. You can use the app support to monitor the status of the battery. You get a set of terminal bolts and a user manual. These are the product parameters. Pause the screen and read over them if you want to. If not, we'll continue on. And also make note the manufacturer is calling this a mini battery, but it is not a true form factor mini. This is a group 24 size case. Exterior features of the battery. We have two carry handles across the top for ease of transportation and movement. You see their nice graphics kit right there. They got one of the shiniest graphics kits there are. 
we can see there is a QR code here and here for if you're using Google Play or Apple products to download the app to access the Bluetooth. There's the Bluetooth address right there, the Mac ID you can scan for finding the battery. Nothing on that side of the case, just some generic warnings, answer capacity, amperage ratings, and things like that on the back of the case. Their contact information, nothing on that side of the case. The app is fairly straightforward to use, kind of a basic app, not really advanced. You can't really change any settings or anything. You saw during the capacity test, voltages, capacity, things like that. The alarm screen gives you some indicators right here. Click the info tab right there, gives you some basic information. That's your product number, serial number, things like that. The back button is right there. And the battery information gives you state of charge, even though some of the values are kind of chopped off on the display right here on the iPad. Cell voltages, things like that. And then the state button right there shows you the discharge fats and charge fats, things like that. Uh, there's no indication of heating option on this battery, so I'll find out when I dig into it. But overall, the app is kind of, I'll just call it basic, and it's very slow to update while you're using the battery. There's a good delay between what the actual voltage is on the battery and what it's displaying right here. Same thing with the amp hour capacity calculation, very slow to update, but... Yeah, it does give you some more information than just putting a meter or something on the battery. So. so now time for the teardown portion of today's video. I'm going to attempt to take the lid off this battery, check the wires, the BMS, the cells, high and low temp protection, all that good stuff. So let's crack the lid open. All right, I saved the last little bit of glue for you. As always, we can look at the battery at the same time together. So there goes the remainder of the glue. Let's check it out. So for wire size on this battery, the positive lead is a six gauge, 200 degree silicone jacketed lead. Connection is tight there, and we have dual 8-gauge, 200-degree silicone jacketed leads for the negative. That is tight there. We have hydraulic crimp connections up here, hydraulic crimps here. That's tight there. It's tight on the board, even though the board is kind of moving around right there. Just got some tape around that fiber board, and the fiber board is glued down to the tie band compression for the cells right there. So take that for what it's worth. And their selection of wire size would be adequate if this is in fact a 100 amp BMS. Pretty much industry standard to run two eights and a six for 100 amp units. And looking on the board, we have a single temperature sensor right there glued down to the top of the cells. So I moved the foam from the top of the heat sink to try to find a data stamp or whatever, 100 amp rating or anything like that. No identifiable data on this board, but I did find the maker of the board right there. As you can see, it's Pace X, so it's a Pace BMS, which is unique because I've not seen a Pace BMS in one of these small units. Usually Pace is for the big home energy storage style batteries, the 48 volt stuff. And looks like we have an identifying number right here, SST24-0768 1.1. So the cells were sitting in the case like that. So I'm flipping you around. So you can see all the foam around the cells. We have tie band compression with corner supports right there. We have a fiber board in between each of the cells. You can see the foam over the relief vents right there, the relief windows. They have holes over the relief windows. Even though some of the windows are partially blocked by the foam, I don't think that would be an issue if one of the cells were to want to vent. I think it could. Plenty of clearance around there. And all the balance leads were held in place by the adhesive on the back side of the high density foam. The cell connecting bus bars are all making good contact with the terminals on the batteries. You see the laser welds right there. Fairly decent and then all the balance leads are connected by machine screws. Get you a shot of one of the QR codes and data off one of the cells. So hopefully that's a clear enough shot if you want to look up the numbers on your own. There are normally 100 amp hour cells right there. You can see 320 watt hours. I'll run this through a QR code scanner and see if I can find the manufacturer. So I ran the QR codes through my normal decoder to try to find some information, manufacturer, couldn't find anything. What was interesting is that the cells show a manufacturing date of 2022. And of course it's November, 2025 now. So are these aged out cells or are they fake QR codes or just mystery cells? I don't know. But what I will tell you, if you look right there in the center of that QR code, it looks like there was a previous QR code that has been scratched away or ground down. I've seen this several times on different batteries. It's almost unmistakable. Look at all the scratches. Then they etch back over it to put a new code on it. That's what it looks like. And another cell, notice the discoloration right here, like there might have been another code in this area right here, and it's been ground off, leaving a little bit of trace residue of heat stuff right here. 
See, if you look at it, something just doesn't look quite right on the codes. There's like some kind of shadow or something behind the QR code. You see how the letters aren't very crisp and things like that. Yeah, I'm not saying that that's what it is, but you know, it just, it looks a little suspect. Let me show you a QR code off of a verified new sale right here. Check out how crisp and clean the writing is, how crisp the QR code is. You don't see any shadowing effects or any kind of like scratchy looking spots or anything behind the QR. So just trying to show you comparable difference between two different sets of QR codes and what I'm looking for. And back to the Dynast, you see how kind of like the text and stuff, like there's all those microscopic scratches and things back behind the behind it right there. Just, I don't know. And I'm questioning the validity of these QR codes in this battery, but I'm bringing you an honest review. And if it puts doubt in my mind, I'm going to let you know about it. I will say that the aluminum case of the cell is bright and shiny, no tarnishing or anything like that. And it appears there's only one layer of wrap on the outside of the cell. So I'm gonna check behind low temp protection on this battery. Notice the temperature indicated right here. I'm charging into the battery right here. So when I trigger a higher low temp, you'll see the current dropped right here. We should see some kind of trigger or alarm over here. So I'm gonna put heat to the sensor first. We'll do high temp. So remember, watch temperature and the little power supply. Here we go. All right, somewhere around 150 degree range. It cut power. Remember, this app is very slow to update. See where it comes back on roughly because I said the app's not that great. All right, it just clicked back on, showing 121 the time it clicked on, so your high temp charging protection does work. Now I'll do the same thing for low temp charge protection. I will wrap the sensor in ice and see if the low temp charge protection triggers at zero degrees Celsius, 32 Fahrenheit, like they claim. All right, should trigger any minute now. All right, we stop charging. See if we get a temperature update right there. Didn't really give us an update around 33 so somewhere around zero degrees c like i said that thing's so slow to read right there protection charge low temp protection so it does work warm it back up all right back to charging it's now time to wrap up the video on the dynes mini trolling motor bluetooth edition battery well, it did work as advertised. High and low temp charge protection worked. We had overrated capacity, which is always a good thing. Adequate wire sizing, a new BMS for this format of battery using a Pace BMS. So, you know, that's new. That's fine. Pace has good products for their large battery. So hopefully that's a good BMS. It's got that weird diode circuit in it like a couple of other brands have. So you'll see some weird voltages. So be aware of that. Having mystery cells, not being able to find any data. Is that a detractor to you? You'll have to decide for yourself. And if you like this battery, something you may be interested in, I will have a convenient link in the description down below so you can easily find it, do a price check, things like that, compare this to other batteries, and also have some other videos in the description so you can compare this battery to some other budget-friendly models. So now it's your turn. Tell me what you think about this battery in the comment section down below. While you're there, please let me know your favorite 12.8 volt, 100 amp hour battery. I always like to hear your feedback and real world experiences. As always, thank you for watching. Y'all take care. Be safe. I will see you on the next one. Special thanks to Dynast Battery for providing this field testing sample for me to evaluate.